Okay, we, we got ahead of ourselves here. We're working on General Electric um, television. I don't know what size tube would you say that is, Jesse? 12 inch, maybe? Yeah. 12 inch rectangle tube, 1955-56 chassis, and metal case. And we just got the TV out of the, the metal case. Um, we have a raster, but no tuner, no intelligence at all. Do have a little bit of scratchy on the audio, so the audio circuit's working. But I think either the tuner or the IF section is dead. We do have vertical, horizontal. So we, we had to spray the pots. The contrast pot seemed to be what well, was really dirty and uh, and it, we seemed like we were getting um, intelligence through when we adjusted the contrast pot. That might have just been dirt on the pot. So we've got it set here on the tube cart. We're just going to go ahead and fire it up again and see if we can get um, get something on the screen through the tuner. Some kind of intelligence. And uh, let's see if I can find... I've got Channel 12, let's see here. Yeah, 10, 11, 12, something like that. Uh, let's see. 10. Okay, so we'll go to channel 10 on the VHF tuner. I think that's it right there. And um, if we have any, um, okay, and then let's get, turn around here, and uh, let's plug it into the isolation transformer. Power it up. 140, 730 watts, dropping to 193 watts. 87 watts. Now it's going back up, 112 watts. Okay, starting to get a little sound. We got raster. See it? Full brightness, so the tube is pretty dim. But in our contrast, um, a little bit of crud there on the contrast. Wiggling the tubes, tuner tubes. Oh, there goes something. Okay, it's a good sign. Okay, I'm wiggling the tuner tube. You see, I'm tuning the channel selector, and we're not getting any. See, there's no intelligence, no flicker at all. Let's see if we get anything with wiggling. Yeah, see, we are getting something through there when I wiggle the tubes on the tuner. All right, so the question is, the IF amp tube is lit up. Okay, 
this IF amp to is not lit up. Okay, I'm going to kill the power and pop that tube out. No, it's warm. Okay, I was going to say it's stone cold, but it's not. It's warm. So the filament is good on that one at least. Okay. We reseated all the tubes and sprayed all the tube sockets and pins. This is the one that I was rattling a moment ago and I was getting a little bit of noise on the screen. So let's try that again. We ought to have audio if nothing else. Both, tun both tuner tubes have filament. They're both hot. Okay, so let's put a test tone, test signal on the tuner. Okay, we worked a little bit here and discovered that we needed to hook up a video signal using the Sencor VG9192 and uh, so we hooked up uh, signal in directly into the tuner uh, actually on the output of the tuner to bring a signal straight into the TV set and the signal was not passing uh, into the IF stages so at this point uh, we're getting ready to pull one of the IF amp tubes out. So let's check this RF tube on the tube tester Okay, we're looking for 3CB6, 6. do I have this turned on? Yeah, I got it, okay. Let's just let it be running. We set the line level, uh, well, I don't interfere with the electrostatic, there we go. We set the line level, depending on the house line level, we put that in the middle there, we turn this on. And we're looking for 3CB6, which is right there, right above the line, 3CB6. Three C B six. And it's a type 2. So we switch to type 2. It's a filament 3.15. 3.15 volt. Plate is set for 21. That's 22, 21, and the top ones are set to A, E, F, and G, and the bottom one is set to B and C. All right, and let's see which socket are we talking about, this one here. Okay, so we'll let it warm up. on leakage. As it warms up, it's going into the good. Not great, but okay. And the short tests, we click you see the C goes both directions, there's no shorts. So let's check it again. C is down, B is down. Okay. Okay, it says it's good. And if you can go with that number at the top, I don't remember what that, I think that might be like the gain or a number 70 right there. I don't know how accurate that is on a tube tester. Well, we're going to try it on another tube tester, just compare it. Um, 
so let's let's try it in one of these two casters. All right, three C B six. Turn it on. Let it warm up. It's glowing. It's a good sign. Their emission should read in the green on the top scale. And remember we had a 70, I think, on the other one. We'll see if it's even close on this one. Yeah, pretty close. Not a real strong tube. Definitely could stand to be replaced, especially for it being an RF amplifier. Um, leakage. Test good. That's the bottom scale. So the grid's not leaky, but the emission's not great. It's in the good, but not great. So we can bump the voltage up and we see if it increases the emission. We'll go up to four volts. Yeah. Okay, so it's a weak tube and we can do a life test here. We'll let it settle back down. And if it's a strong tube, when we click the life test, it backs the uh, cathode voltage, uh, the heater voltage off, and the needle should stay there if it continues to emit. But if it doesn't, and it's a weak tube, the needle will drop off real fast. So let's flip the life switch and see it's caving, caving fairly quickly. It's not not terrible. Okay, it's just borderline. Okay, borderline. But I don't know if I have another tube. I'll check my stash. We'll see if I have another 3BE6 or 3, 3CB6. Right? 3, yeah, 3CB6. Um, we'll check the stash and see if we've got another one real quick. Okay, we found a th two more tubes in the stash that might be an option for us. A 3DK6 and a 3CB6. They're both substitutes for our two, well, obviously 3BC6. A 3CB6 is the actual tube. So we're checking here. Uh, let's double check, make sure we got the right setting for this tube. 3 delta. Kilo six three six D one zero. Okay, so it's the same settings I would expect it to be. You see that go all the way up, but it's not going to. It's a little better tube though. Much stronger tube, almost ninety. That's good. That's probably what's definitely better than the one we had. The one we had was about 70. Okay, let's see if it's leaky. It's not. So that tube will work. It's almost, if we leave it in there, it's going on up a little more. All right, so let's try, let's set that one aside. Now let's try the original Sylvania. This is an old box. I don't even know if there's a tube in there. Yeah, there's one in there. 3 Charlo and it's been replaced. So let's see if that's any good. Yeah, that's, that's about the same as the one we just had. Not leaky. Yeah. Okay, so we'll try this one first. And see if we get anything at all. And we'll try this one second. Right. 
So we replace that first amp, RF amp, or IF amp. And uh, see if we get any, notice anything different. It is entirely conceivable I have any raster? Yeah, I can see raster. There we go, I've got a signal. I can get there, I think there's locked. The signal's weak, so it's not locking, not sinking. I have audio, but it's very weak. There's the picture. Um, let's see if we can get any. There we go. Look at that. Of course, the shutter in the camera, you know that. You're getting those bands, and that's the shutter in the camera, not the TV itself. But look at that. Um, we've got video now. on channel 10 okay there it is heroes if you scroll down see if I don't know if you can get to the bottom of the screen uh, and the shutter give you I don't know, it's too bright in the room and so it's not gonna sync with the shutter but okay that's a great sign we got don't have audio yet so we probably got a bad audio tube we'll have to track that one down I've got one tube here that might be the audio tube that looks like it's about to blow out. It's just, it's red, it's just absolutely blooming red. Um, but I think that tube helped us with our, our uh, weak video signal. I'm, I'm fiddling with the tuner uh, tubes. Right, let's back off the brightness. There's contrast. See the signal's so weak I can't get a good sync. It's horizontal. Or it might be a... See how the... the can you see those bands in the camera? You can see how wide they are at the top. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, I'm sorry, linearity is way off. And I don't really care about that right now. Obviously, you've got a lot of work to do to get to that point. What we're trying to do is we need to get a troubleshoot. There's, there's a locked in a little better. Channel 10. So at least it knows it's channel 10. And at least we have video. So that's a good sign. Um... And you can't hear it audio, but I can just ever so faintly. So the question is, is the problem with the output? Right, that's touching the volume control center conductor. Okay. which means it's capable of producing sound if you had a decent signal so I still think we've got a weak either a, a weak tuner tube or maybe a second stage RF that's weak so 
we'll just continue the troubleshooting. We'll train, we'll change the tube on the uh, second IF amplifier, and I suspect that might that might be our trouble. I mean, we got two bad IF amplifiers. We'd luck out if they were both the same tube, wouldn't we? All right. We should have no difficulty getting to there in about five hours. Good. That'll give us a few hours rest, Father. I'll be glad to put you up for the night. Well, Father, we have to use your shortwave sender. Charles has been taking good care of Let's go. You mean me too? Yes, you too. Get up. So there has to be an answer. On all Star Trek tonight, starting at 8, 7 central. We are all in this together. I guess. Right here on each and I. Okay. Um, I've got, obviously we've got alignment issues, linearity issues. And uh, let me hook up the... Uh, VG91, and uh, you can see the pronounced um, linearity issues with the window circle. Let's see, let's go to channel 6, and there you go. Um, so I've got some alignment issues to deal with here. Um, and let's see if I can get it any closer. The vertical capacitors need replaced. Vertical circuit capacitors need replaced. So um, that's, that's where we're seeing this linearity issue here. But I'm getting the audio back. Did some alignment in the IF section, and um, we're getting some audio back. So I think replacing the uh, filter caps in the uh, on the board. There's about a half a dozen. Sorry, there's about a half a dozen caps that need to be replaced there. And especially those around the vertical section, um, we should eliminate this height issue. And I can't find the pot for width. There may be just magnets that adjust the width on these older sets, but I'll uh, I'll tinker with that a little bit. Um, and I think that might be the the issue that the picture tube is not set up, centered with the rig and it's laying down on the chassis. So um, I'll work on replacing the caps on the main board and then we'll come back and do another alignment and see if we can get a decent uh, alignment. But you know I've got um, Go get the money. you know it's it's coming along here we got the buzz. No idea what a burden this is. Well, you just put your fears to rest. John Court the third will get you that money. Here we go. Ten thousand. Who are you gonna get that kind of money? Okay, we're back on the uh, General Electric television and uh, we're getting a few things corrected. I've replaced a couple of high voltage caps and I want to check the high voltage on the the, uh, the set to see um, what kind of high voltage we're running and somewhere the uh, high voltage on this picture tube is expecting 13,000 volts and uh, I do have one thing I want to point out here 
this boost voltage 275 is running 230 so that's not helping us and I suspect that we may have a low uh, B plus in here but let's just check and see what our high voltage is running and uh, let's see what uh, what that's looking like running channel I've got buzz so I need to work on that buzz um, Got a full screen, but the uh, there, that's a little better. Right, let's check to see what kind of voltage we got running here. I'm going to take the high voltage probe here and check the anode on the picture tube. So let me focus the camera on the meter. Ready. Okay, let's see what we got it set at here. Says I'm running about 110 volts here, so take that out. That's a little better. Voltage and high focus, uh, voltage and high voltage. Okay, according to this, run about 8,000 volts. Yeah, run about. Turn the volume down. Running about 9,000 volts. So let's check it with the 10,000 volt probe and see if that reads any better. Yeah, there we go. 9,000 volts. So we don't have, we're not getting our full line voltage here. And I suspect that that's because our filter caps are all a little bit leaky. And it's going to impact a lot of different signals. It's going to impact our B plus. And um, so there we go. We, we're running about 9,000 volts. You can see the bottom scale there. 10,000 is at the top. And I'm using the 10,000 volt probe here. You can see. And uh, we're only getting 9,000 volts. And what did we say we needed? Um, we needed about 13,000. Okay, so it helped to bump up the uh, voltage on the supply. Let's look at our line voltage. We're running just under 120 volts. I think 117 is like the magic number for these tests. And um, 
so my meter on my power supply over there is is not accurate let me zoom in here I'm belaboring this whole issue of the power supply thing to illustrate that you have external factors that you have See, to get resolved before you can get accurate readings on your tests. 30 volts. So that meter needs to be uh, cal cal uh, calibrated on the uh, filt uh, isolated power supply, but that's good to know. Um, let's compare that. Let's uh, let's do a little test here. I've got a meter. Um, I'm going to shut everything down and uh, let's just check our power here. Let's see if you're watching what I'm doing here. Okay. My ground plug is upside down so all right, let's see what this says. My voltage is uh, volts. 118. 118.4. Okay, so let's plug the isolation transformer in. Come over here. And uh, let's just see what it thinks it's putting out. I can get that plugged in or not. Yeah, I can. Okay, so it's reading 126. So let's make it, let's move it down to 118. And you can see the numbers. <clears throat> it's reading about 125 volts on the BK Precision, which it isn't precise. And there's 118 right there. 118 volts if this is accurate the Super Mac claims we're at 115 16 17 somewhere in there 118 volts so it's pretty accurate All right let's turn this off and uh, let's zero the meter a little bit low there we go all right now let's try it again well that's much better so yeah we're at 118 volts now 117 118 so now I'm gonna put the meter I'm gonna put the camera on the meter and we're going to read the uh, boost voltage when I turn the TV set on. All right. So let me turn the TV on. And you notice 237 volts. And it should be 275. There's 246 volts. Okay. Let's take a look at the Mac. Let's bump it to high voltage. 10,000. Yeah, less than 9,000 volts. About 8,500 volts. And let's see if the brightness control does affect it a little bit. When I crank the brightness up, it really stresses the power supply. And there's correct brightness right there, and it's running about 8,500 volts. So, we've got some work to do on the on the set so let's keep working on the
power supply. And we'll see how it how it does. Let me give you another shot of the video so far. We still have that interstage buzz we've got to work on. On the, um, I want to check this this uh, power supply, and I'm looking at this 130 volt right here on R39. That's going to uh, this trap, and um, this 130 volts is this is the 130 volts off of the power supply. Let's see if I can find the schematic. There we go. Um, yeah, here we go. The 130 volt source. And so I'm, I'm just checked on. I'm going to see what that voltage is. If that's low, then it's going to send a low power to everything in the high voltage circuits because the uh, horizontal output is um, expecting. 130 volts right there and if that's low everything else is going to be low the boost is going to be low because the boost is coming off of the horizontal output and that oscillator that drives that transformer so let's uh, let's put a meter on the 130 volt line and just see what kind of power we're getting there I'll zoom in on the meter so that you can see that and then we'll power it up Okay, we're, we're hooked up to the 130 volt. I think I'm on the right side of that resistor. So we should be able to fire everything up here. And uh, get a reading on 130 volts. Power everything up. Reading a little high right now. Let's see what it does when the power settles in all the tubes start conducting hey kids what is it up in the sky is it a bird is it a plane no it's superman yes sir kids a real flying superman that can be yours okay so the set's running now and you can see how low we are should be 130 volts so our power supply is not keeping up with the uh, B plus so we definitely have some work to do in the power supply and uh, that may correct some of our vertical issues the linearity issues actually what I'm doing is I'm forcing the uh, TV set to give a full display and and by doing that forcing it the width or the height which is it's not have does not have adequate height because it's not adequate voltage everything is low it's about 40 percent low 30 percent low and so once I get those voltages up I should be able to shrink the picture tube and get this linearity resolved so let's go back into those main main filter caps that are back over here and uh, and on the schematic we can see there's whatever C2, C3, C3, C4, something like that. And um, there are those two taps that you see right there and there. And I've replaced one cap in that bridge there that was connected directly to the boost and it didn't improve the, uh, the voltage at all. There is one other issue that it could be the it could be the problem, and I want to see if I can move the camera. I'm so sorry for the rudimentary camera work, um, but I'm going to try to get the lighting in here where you can see it, and then zoom in um, over next to that big transformer right there, uh, or right below it. Excuse me. See that? That. Uh, will it focus? There we go. Yeah, you see that right there? 
That is a selenium rectifier that, that has the K5 on it. That is a selenium rectifier. And those can are notorious for producing low voltage and uh, are rectifying and incorrectly. So if I replace that selenium rectifier with a with a uh, silicon diode, um, that may help as well. Now let me show you on the schematic where this is. There is the power line coming in, and there's a three watt. A three, a five watt, three ohm resistor. That's a surge resistor, and there's the diode, that selenium rectifier. And if that's weak, um, it would give us issues all the way through the power supply. And you see right there's our 130 volt source that we're low on. What did we say, 115? So it's it. We need. We got a ways to go. To improve that, but then of course these big filters that we just looked at a second ago, those big cans, those that's C1 and C2 right there. If those are leaky, then of course they're going to drag this voltage down as well. And then of course there's the 30 microfarad right there for this other source, 115 volt source. So. Um, I, I really strongly suspect these two caps might be leaky, and if they are, of course, that's going to uh, that's going to drag these voltages down. So I think we'll replace the 300 and the 200 on both of those, and then if we still don't have our 130 volt source after that, then we'll we know we've still got a low voltage issue here that's dragging us down. We'll replace this M1 selenium rectifier with the uh, with a silicone diode silicon silicone silicon uh, M1 did we call it an M1 let's see what they call that transformers speakers coils resistors where is it M1 M3, M2, M1. So we won't have any trouble replacing that. Yeah, selenium rectifier. We won't have any problem replacing the selenium rectifier with a silicon diode. And uh, I've got a whole supply of those here. All right, let's get busy with these caps. Well, the 14T007 General Electric has been quite, uh, quite a fun repair so far. And we've gotten all the way to up to getting ready to do some cap replacement and uh, replace the uh, we'll replace the selenium rectifier and uh, spray all the contacts and switches and pots and get that all set up so um, in part two that's what we'll do we'll see how far we get in part two we may even make it a part three I, I hate to have a three-part television repair and restoration video but I don't want to make these too long so um, I'll go ahead and uh, and finalize part two and get it posted for you and uh, again thanks for watching if you have any comments uh, give me a shout in the comment section or a thumbs up and uh, share this video with some of your friends who are into uh, vintage electronics